So we're, we're talking about headphone mixes here and, and also kind of like another reason why we need a headphone mix though. Um, the you know, reason why we were talking about headphone mixes uh, before with the audience is to set up different mixes for different musicians. And you can still use it for this one here, but also we want to make sure we don't have any latency. So we want to make sure that the singer is hearing stuff directly from the input path and the, uh, the, the, we are hearing stuff from the, um, the monitor path. So basically the problem is that the engineer needs to hear everything from the monitor mix and the singer needs, uh, is going to get latency from Pro Tools. And that goes because the, the, the signal comes from the microphone into the board, goes into Pro Tools or the multi-track recorder. Um, you're going to hear the pre-recorded song at the same time and then they're going to sing along with it. The signal comes back into here on the monitor mix and they're going to go back in their headphones and that's they're going to be hearing a, um, a bit of latency there. So everything's going to be a little bit off and you need to move things over. So we don't want to have that. So the solution is they hear the music from Pro Tools on the monitor path, but they're going to hear the vocal direct on the input path. Okay, so we're basically going to make it so that our singer can hear themselves on the input path instead of the monitor path. Oh, Crispy is saying uh, probably that latency is talking to AJ. Yeah, and that's that's probably true. That's why that happens. Okay, so what the engineer hears is the monitor path. The music and vocals are both after Pro Tools. That's the control room mix. What the singer hears, uh, this is what's going to be happening after we set up our headphone mix here, is the music from the monitor path, but the vocals from the input path. Okay, so we want to make sure that's what we are happening. So the headphone mix on the O2R is sent from auxes 7 and 8. The studio section has buttons for auxes 7 and 8. The control room section has buttons for assignments one and two. Uh, and if we look at this over here, here we go. So here, control room section down here, that's what the, uh, that's what, um, that's what our control, our engineer, that's what we are hearing. So let's see how it says assign one and two right here. And up here in the studio section, what the musician is hearing says aux seven and eight. So that's what we're gonna be setting. So basically the way we have it set up at SAE, is assignments one and two are actually set for aux seven and eight. So if you push assign one and assign two, that's hearing aux seven and eight. And that's what this is set up right here. Auxes one through eight are going out to omni outs one through eight. Those are physical outputs. So aux seven is going out to omni out seven and aux eight is going out to omni out eight. And you're gonna have to remember that when you're doing your patching. So to create a headphone mix, our layer select should say 25 through 48. Our fader mode should say aux, and our aux select should say seven for step number one. Make sure you're listening via the headphone mix in the control room. Make sure you have assignments one and two selected. Control room section, assign one and two buttons must be pressed. Yeah, that's what I just said. Uh, number four, create your mix for aux seven, adjusting for artists' wishes where necessary. So you're gonna set up the mix for aux number seven there. And then um, send the microphone input path to the headphone mix you're going to go to layer 1 through 24 and adjust the channel volume level for the mic. So if your mic is coming into uh, channel 16, like we had it set up for yesterday, we had the microphone coming into channel 16. So instead of 16 being on layer 25 through 48, we would set up 16 uh, for 1 through 24 in there and then send that into the aux send. Okay, so we wouldn't be getting the aux send on channel 40. Channel 40 would be the monitor path. It'd be the same uh, f channel strip there on number 16, channel strip number 16, but it would actually be coming after the, uh, after the, um, uh, the multi-track recorder. So you wanna make sure that you don't have that set up like that. Make sure that your, uh, your, your setup is going from uh, channel 16, not from channel 40 for the headphone mix. And that's it. I mean, I know it, that sounds very basic, or I mean, maybe it doesn't sound basic, but maybe it sounds very quick. Maybe you want something longer, or it feels like there should be more to it, but there's not. It's really, that's it. The main part that's tricky is not how many steps there are. The main part that's tricky is wrapping your head around all the different layers and where to push the buttons and stuff like that. So oftentimes when I'm explaining this, because I only explain this like once every four months, right? So it's not that often I explain this thing four times a year, not super often. Every time I explain, I come around and I expect it to be longer and it's not. And I get to the end, I'm like, oh yeah, that's it. Oh yeah, that is it. It's it. <laughs> that's it. That's like, that's all you have to really deal with right there is that. So. Um, don't think that you're missing something because it's not a huge long explanation that takes hours. 
you're really not missing anything. The main thing is that you need to get in there and do it. Uh, just listening to me explain it over and over again is not going to help much at all. This is going to be helpful for just kind of hearing it once or twice, listening to it a couple times, but you really need to get in there and do it. Book some time in that room. Um, so the couple of notes for the setup, the input path, the microphone is plugged into mic bay number one, uh, input O2R can be channel number one, uh, channel one direct is on, stereo is off, Pro Tools channel input is set to input one. This is if you're coming into channel one. On the monitor path, Pro Tools channel output is set to O2R uh, 27, O2R 20, uh, channel 27, um, our stereo two track song will go into 25 through 26. So if you're if you're just like this is for this uh, this set these setup notes for if you're doing like a stereo song like you're just got like a stereo mix and you're just recording some vocals probably what you do is have that stereo song come into channel 25 and 26 so it's on on uh, right there and then you'd bring the microphone maybe pl you could you could really plug it in this first part here where it says mic bay number one mic uh, input number one you could have that set for number three if you wanted to but you know you could just have it set for number one go into pro tools channel no input number one but when you come out of pro tools come out of different channels every single um every single one that you use in pro tools uh will be set up slightly will be like a different thing and then you can um, and you kind of have to, that's the, the, a little bit of the tricky part there is that when you, when you set up the output from Pro Tools, if you're doing like overdubs, if you're doing multi-track overdubs, hey, let me just open up Pro Tools and show you what I mean by this. If I'm doing multi-track overdubs, what I would do is, I don't have my iLock plugged in, so I'm not sure what's going to work and what's not going to work. It's okay. And there might be a couple of plugins that aren't going to work right now, but it should be fine. So basically, what I'm going to show you here is if I have a stereo track, and then um, I want to I want to set it up in in uh, Pro Tools here. Let's get this initializing controllers out of the way. Come on, Pro Tools, initialize those controllers. You can do it. You could do it. Yeah, okay. So um, let's create a new track here. And uh, we're going to call this one Badoom Vocal Recording. And we're going to go in here. We're going to grab uh, IO settings. will just be a stereo mix. Uh, interleaved. Well, here, let's set this up for. Yeah, stereo mix will be fine. I'll, I'll kind of show it to you like this. So we got this here. I'm going to prompt for the location. Go to my documents, go to my Pro Tools stuff in here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a stereo track. This will be my stereo uh, song. Whatever it is, it's just going to be stereo, and we'll put a song on there. <clears throat> there you go, so we'll get there. Here, we'll drag this one in here. Boom. Okay, so we got this one in here, this little track in here. There it is for people to record, for somebody to record some vocals onto. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make a few audio tracks and let's say that basically let's say we might want to record some overdubs and stuff like that so I'm just gonna make eight audio tracks here and we can always make more if we need to down the road and I'm gonna give these names 
local main and then local harm 01, maybe local harm 02, maybe vocal double 01. Boom, 02, 03, 04, you know, whatever, whatever it is. And you, you, you know, just name them as you go or name them a bunch of them up front, whatever you want to do. But I got this here. Now, let me turn off my track numbering. I don't need the track numbers on here. There we go. So now I got these in here. And what I'm going to do is the inputs here for all these would be the same. So interface, oh wait. That's our Let me just set up my playback engine here. Um, there we go. So now my inputs for all these would be the same. My mic line left right there. <clears throat> And then the outputs are what's going to change. So the outputs here, so these are going to be our outputs. Wait, hold on a second. Let's set these all up for no output for just a second. Let me just get these uh, naming, the names correct. There we go. OK. So now on these here, my outputs, I would set these all up to be individual outs. So it's just, I'm gonna, and I'm just going to set these up for whatever right now. So it's just going to be one left and right. Um, and then these ones here would be other separate outputs. So that would be going to this one. And this one here would be going to this one. This one here would be going to this one. This one here would be going to this one and whatever. And they're all, they're all weird names because I don't actually have anything in here, but you kind of get the idea here. So these here, this here, four, five, uh, five, five, six, left, right, all this stuff here. But basically, they're all going to come out to different outputs. It's going to go into your uh, O2R. So this one here would be channel, uh, it would be digital three, because this would be digital one and two, digital three, digital four, digital five, digital six, digital seven, digital eight, digital nine, digital ten, like that. But the, we wouldn't have to change anything for our vocalist, because the vocalist is getting everything on the input path directly from their microphone straight back to their headphones. All right, so that's kind of why we go through all these steps here. And probably what I'll need to do is when we're in the O2R again, I can show it to you and then kind of explain it to you a little bit better. This might be a little bit of a stretch for you to wrap your brain around here. But let's just go through the steps here of how to do it. Um, one thing you can do is you can quickly copy the fader levels to the uh, aux send amount for your headphone mix if you want to set up a headphone mix real quick. Let's say you have a bunch of uh, different levels that you want to send out, so di different levels for your headphone mix. You, you can copy things around in the O2R. Press and hold the layer button you want to copy, and then from, and then you, you hold the um, aux level, the aux send that you want to send it to. So for example, if I want to set all my my monitor mix uh, that I'm using, and I want to sit, like send that to my aux one through eight for my headphone mix, then you just hold it down aux uh, um, uh, layer 25 through 48, and then go and hold down aux seven, and it will copy it over. And then you hit yes, and there you go. Make sure your aux sends are set for pre. So press the aux select display button, and then down here in the bottom of the corner, you make sure you're set for sends 25 through 48. And then in the bottom down here, make sure global says pre. Click that, hit enter on it, and then you're good to go. Finally, the final thing you do when you're setting up your headphone mix, uh, or the first thing, whatever you, however order you want to do it, is right here. Boom, boom, boom. Omni outs, seven and eight. You can go into Furman, headphone, input, left and right. So you need two uh, cables there to do that. Omni out, seven and eight, go to Furman, left and right, input. Just like same, that's basically the same as on the, um, the Audient. It's just you need to come out on the Audient and come out from a different place. Cool. All right. I'm gonna go